This week, we are joined by Caitlin Alexander, who is a trainee solicitor specializing in marginalized groups. A pupil from Carrick Academy, she now works within immigration law and is a passionate guest speaker at Glasgow University. Welcome, Caitlin. Thanks for taking part. Thank you for having me. Not at all. Did you always know you wanted to be a lawyer? Um, I knew in school that I wanted to do something to help people. So I kind of, I talked to the careers advisor and I got some work experience. So I did some experience in like psychology and counselling and then I did some in a law firm. And I thought that being a lawyer would fit in with like fit in with my interests more because I thought that I could help people on a bigger scale. Absolutely. Was it quite hard to get those opportunities while you were at school? How did you get them? I think I had a family friend that helped me get the work experience with psychology, but it was more just like asking about, like seeing if anyone had any connections that could just get me like a day, a day experience just shadowing something that's amazing i mean we talk about that a lot just working in your community that you already have because someone will know someone and there's always opportunities if you're just very aware and you tell everyone i'm looking for opportunities and not no absolutely yeah be active about it just let everyone know that like this is what i'm interested in doing and people are really eager to to find opportunities for you yeah was that your first idea of a dream job? Is that where you started or did you have other ideas before and kind of worked your way towards being a lawyer? Um, you know, I think I was always kind of set like between psychology or like being a lawyer. Mm -hmm. And I think the work experience kind of solidified my interest in like studying law. So really useful, yeah, really valuable to have those days and weeks while you're at school. No, absolutely, because it's, it's such a, a big decision to make at such a young age. So it's really good to, like even a day experience, just seeing what actually goes on, like on the ground in the actual job and um, to see if it's something that you can do, you, like that you want to do. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you're not putting much pressure on yourself when it's a day. Uh, when you start thinking about university and options and internships, it's a lot more intense at that stage. Yeah. No, I think that's really valuable. How did your volunteering and work experience at school help you to make that decision then? Being in court and seeing what goes on and how like vulnerable people were represented. I think just from there, I was able to see how vulnerable people actually are and how helpful having a legal representative can be. Could you specialise quite quickly or how did that work with your degree? Yes, yeah, so the, the first, so the four-year degree in the first two years are mostly like compulsory subjects. So the Law Society of Scotland want you to do these specific subjects for you to, like for you to be admitted as a solicitor in Scotland. So the first two years, I just picked those subjects. Uh, in third year, I studied abroad in Norway. Um, and I chose to study abroad there because they had a lot of human rights subjects. So I did like international human rights, international refugee law, women's rights. Um, and then fourth year, I kind of specialized again in like immigration law um human reproduction law yeah that's amazing that you got to choose those different things through your course i expected there would be a quite stringent subject that you could take but it means that you're actually studying the things that will be useful to you when you specialize outside of uni yeah no absolutely they're quite they're quite good with helping you pick subjects as well um they had like a a lecture for each of the subjects before you got to pick them and they would tell you like what it was about and what you would learn and so it was it was good like to have that so that you know you knew if it aligned with your interests or not. 
absolutely that's so valuable we never had that I would have loved that uh, we just randomly picked in the dark <laughs> <laughs> I would have done that without, without those lectures yeah no absolutely so you graduated from your law degree which was a four-year degree and then you trained to be a solicitor right yes what so, is involved in all of that okay so after you do your your law degree then you have to do a one-year postgraduate diploma in professional legal practice so that's that's another year at uni but it's a lot more practical so it's actually run by solicitors um, and you just basically do all of the things that you need to do as a solicitor but in kind of like a supervised um, made up setting so like there's actors and they pretend to be clients and things like that so you kind of like you pretend that you're selling a house and you pretend that you're helping someone in a divorce um, and are these and then, actors other students or do they actually bring people in yeah they, they bring people in sometimes it's other students uh, like students that have done the diploma before mm -hmm. and sometimes it's the people that run the diploma sometimes it's the solicitors that take the tutorials so it's quite funny to to see like like the, they get right into it the like the people that run the diploma are pretending that they're going through this divorce that's not like amicable at all it's very funny wow there's like backstories and everything oh yeah they're totally like like really mad at their ex-partners and like talking rubbish about them but they're fake but it's funny do you feel it's quite a safe environment when you've got actors and you're in your final year or is it quite a stressful situation to deal with um I think it's a very it's a very good setting because it's it's a learning environment and if you do if you do something wrong then you're not really making anyone's life worse mm. um, and the people that are the actors give you a lot of feedback on what you've done uh, and you get to see all of your classmates like do the same thing as well so it's just it's a really supportive environment and you get a lot of constructive feedback that's amazing. That must be such a good environment to have. Well, because your classmates will become mentors in that situation and you'll all be able to learn from each other. Yeah, no, absolutely. Everybody gives everybody constructive feedback. So could you pick subjects within the diploma as well? Yeah, so again, like some of them were compulsory and like criminal litigation and I can't remember what else, like <laughs> commercial awareness and like property law those were those were compulsory but then you got to pick so I did human rights and family law mm -hmm. um, like the ones that aligned more with my interests yeah. and it's a good time then to specialize because employers will, will sometimes look at the subjects that you did in your diploma and if you chose them relevant to like what they specialize in and then they know that that's what you're interested in absolutely that makes sense so you get your diploma, which is a year, and then what happens next? And then it's a two year traineeship. So it's just on the job learning. So it's no longer actors, it's like real people, real situations. And you just, you just do the job of a lawyer for two years, but you're a trainee. Mm -hmm. um, so right now I'm I'm a trainee and I'm doing, I'm dealing with immigration clients. So I do like almost the same job as the partner of the firm, but maybe slightly lower risk cases. Uh, and then after the two years, if your supervising solicitor thinks that you've kind of met all of the criteria and passed everything that you need to pass, then you'll be admitted as a solicitor in Scotland and then yeah, you can you can practice in like any any area. So just because I've done immigration law throughout my traineeship doesn't mean I'm just an immigration lawyer. Like you just become a solicitor and then I could go and do anything. Like any oh. solicitor role. I didn't know that. I thought it'd be very specialised. No. No, they 
they they make sure that you don't kind of like specialize too early so yeah you can kind of go anywhere from the end of your traineeship that's really cool and is there any exams at the end of that traineeship no you just every quarter of your traineeship you have like this review where you see how you're doing in terms of like the criteria that you need to meet so there's like certain criteria regarding like professionalism or client communication things like that and if you meet those at the end of the traineeship like to a satisfactory um level then you pass and you get admitted awesome is it easier or harder to find a job that you felt passionate about in the area that you wanted to be in it was hard it was very hard I finished my diploma March last year and it took me until December last year to get a job but I'd been looking for traineeships for two years before that and that's what everybody does they look for traineeships in like their third or their fourth year because mm -hmm. um, usually you do it like two years in advance so like, if you were looking now it would probably start in like 2022 I'm working in human rights but it's not just about human rights because you're part of a business and you need to learn how to make that business successful as well so it's about like profits and commercial awareness and things like that as well as helping people yeah and with a smaller business with a smaller company that you work for you'll see a lot more of that I suppose yeah yeah absolutely what is your kind of day-to-day -day task so each day I'll probably see like one or two clients. Right now it's over the phone because of the pandemic, but usually I'll see clients face to face for like two or three hours each if I'm taking a statement. Um, so like I would take a statement about their, about why they're claiming asylum and what they've been through in their home country, why they've come to the UK, just all of those details mm -hmm. um, and then I think what a lot of people don't realize is that like being a solicitor is a lot of like office work it's a lot of admin work there's a lot of printing and scanning and like writing to doctors and other solicitors and courts mm -hmm. um, so it's it's not all client stuff there's a lot of kind of admin bits in between yeah, and I think that's really interesting as well. So many people have loads more admin than they ever expected. It feels like you can't really get away from it. But um, your paperwork is so important. It's documents and everything that for other people as well. So there must be quite a need to get that right every time. There's a pressure all the time. Yeah, absolutely. And that's that's something you like you really do have to learn through making mistakes and it's not it's not the best setting to make mistakes because obviously you're dealing with people's lives and people's future but at least with my boss he's kind of like if you realize you've made a mistake like just come to me as soon as possible and we'll be able to fix it rather than kind of just sitting on it for ages and then it gets worse and worse and there's nothing that you can do about it but I think like the biggest learning curves that I've had have been the times where I've made mistakes and have had to correct them. Yeah, no, I think that's true of so many people as well. How do you leave your work at work and go home? Because you'll have all these different situations going on each day. It'll be a different day every day with different clients. Have you managed to get a balance yet or do you find it's very difficult? Yeah. That's something that is very difficult and before I looked for my traineeship and actually all the way through university I was kind of doing some volunteer stuff in subjects and areas that I'm interested in so various like human rights areas um, just to try to get experience of the kind of clients that I would be dealing with and the kind of traumas that they've been through and the obstacles that they faced to try to learn to deal with hearing about really sensitive stories but I think that 
I don't know if like for me just now it's not it it's not got any easier it's still very hard like especially when you meet a client face to face and they're crying and they can't tell you their story because they're crying so much it's it's very hard to hear that and very hard not to take that home um but I think when I get home I just try to make sure that I have like a good self-care routine um and when I get home I try not to like talk about my work or think about my work just like completely distance myself from it like when like six o'clock hits like that's it for the day no more work well, that's easier said than done of course of course I think it's really important to have it in your mind a time though how did you get involved speaking at the University of Glasgow so early on um yeah so currently I'm teaching workshops uh yeah teaching sexual violence workshops and I got into that in like my second or third year of uni I think I've been doing that for a few years now um and I'm just kind of the the kind of person who like when someone emails round an opportunity I'll just like reply yes so I think that's a good thing to do though because it adds a lot to your CV like if nothing else um, it gives you a lot of experience and when you're being interviewed for jobs and traineeships they, they mostly ask or they mostly want examples of times that you've actually dealt with like sensitive situations or had to express empathy and if you've done a lot of things like that then they're good examples to have. Absolutely I'm so impressed that in second or third year you're like yeah I'll teach. That sounds great. Well done. Like I was just trying to get through my own exams. Uh, that's amazing. And it will show you you continue to do more and more things because you're sure you're happy to say, yeah, I'll do it. Um, and work out how much time you've got after. Yeah. <laughs> I can imagine. What would your advice be to a young person at school right now who's thinking about becoming a solicitor or a lawyer or something within that area? Um, I think it's a good idea not to specialise too early but to think about why it is that you want to become a lawyer because there's some people that get into like commercial law or like buying and selling houses um, because that's where the money is and that's totally fine if that's why you want to get into law and then there's some people that want to do it because they want to help people um, but if you can understand why you want to get into it, then kind of look for experience around that. Because, I mean, everyone's in the same boat. Like, everybody goes to uni, everybody does their law degree, everybody, like, gets about the same grade. So, like, what sets people apart is the experience that they do, like, before and during university. Like, they look for, like, a well-rounded person I think that's fantastic advice and I'd even say that's to anybody who's thinking about what they want to do right now find out what you love and what you're passionate about and what will make you happy and then go from there work out how to make money from it afterwards what experiences that surprise you most saying yeah I'll get involved and then it's come back and you're actually involved what experience have you thought I never expected to be here um I I did some work in the, the high court, which is, it's like the highest court, the highest criminal court in Scotland where like the worst crimes get tried. So it's like the rapes and the murders and like the really bad drug offences. And I signed up to be like a, a witness and victim supporter there. And I kind of didn't really think about it, but then like, after my training a few months later I'm like like in these trials like sitting watching them watching these like victims being like absolutely ripped to shreds by defense solicitors and oh god so I had so many weird experiences there I remember one of the women actually threatened to punch me because I 
tried to get her to stay in court and she didn't want to stay in court so she shouted in my face and said she was going to punch me so I didn't expect to be in that position ever so that was some that was that was an email that you just said yeah okay I'll I'll go up for it or did you just cold, cold call no I, I I sent them an email and I was like oh are you looking for anybody and the law student this is be relevant and they were like yeah come in have a chat Give that's us your amazing I did the training and then I was in court. That's, um, I would never have thought that an email, hi, I'm a student, are there any opportunities that have got you that far? That's so impressive. That email probably took you 15, 20 minutes to write and then you've got such a big line in your CV from that. Absolutely. It's all about just like being active and seeing what's out there and like you send loads of emails that you don't get replies to, but like, the few that you do get replies to, it makes it worth all those kind of rejections or emails that don't that you don't get a response to. That's so true. There's such an art to like looking for a job. And I think when people talk about networking, people like cringe and they're like, oh God, no. But it's one of like the most important things because I would never have found the job that I'm doing right now if like my mum works with this woman whose husband is a solicitor and he managed to like find it advertised but it wasn't somewhere that I knew they advertised solicitor jobs yeah. so I wouldn't even have known it was a thing. Is being a lawyer and being a solicitor what you expected it would be when you were at school? I think yes because I think one of the common mistakes is that people get into law because they've they've seen like Law and Order or something like that, and it's very dramatic and there's a lot of like pointing fingers and shouting in the courtroom. But the the work experience that I did really like showed me the reality of what it is like in a courtroom. So like it's I'm obviously not in criminal law, so it's slightly different, but knowing that it's a lot of office work and yeah that was really helpful because I think people get very surprised by that when they go into practice. Yeah and if you haven't learned that while at school you've already done four years of university before you actually get your teeth into it which can yeah. be pretty daunting if you're sitting there after four years of study and thinking this isn't what I expected. Exactly. And that's probably true of anything. Yeah. It just shows the value of how important it is to get some experience, even if it's a small opportunity while you're at school to give you a taste. So that you've really got the fire in your belly to know this is what I want to do when you go off to university and you know you're going to sign up for four years when you're 17 years old. That's a long time. Yeah. No, absolutely. And just like that, one day of work experience was enough for me to be like I know that this is what I want to do and then I went and applied like used each of my options like each of my five options to apply for law at various universities and I just knew that that's what I wanted to do. That's amazing that's so inspiring thank you so much for taking part in this you've given us so much information I'm so surprised at some of the answers you've given so we've all learned something. Um, thank you so much. Thank you. See you too.